The transformation we're going to learn about in this video are rotations about the origin. And you probably know that a rotation turns an object, whether it's a point or, or an object in two dimensions. So it turns something uh, about a point. So it turns something about a single point and the distance between this point and the object stays constant or stays fixed. Okay, so the distance is fixed between the point and an object. Okay, so uh, it does involve things like you know distances or, or side lengths change or anything like that. It just purely revolves around a, a point. It's pretty simple. Now as a little aside, it's interesting to note that some uh, objects have what's called rotational symmetry. Not all objects have this, of course, um, which is different to reflective symmetry. And rotational symmetry is where you turn at a certain number of degrees or radians and it looks the same. Okay, and simply something like this which has uh, order 2 rotational symmetry so you can see that and this one order 3 rotational symmetry so it looks the same after a certain type of rotation and these things vary now of course this forms a part of a study of matrices we're going to see where this um, transformation matrix comes from so to show this we've got uh, an axis system and we've got uh, two points and the first point is the um, point P and essentially we're going to rotate point P anti-clockwise about O the origin um, anti-clockwise is the positive direction you should be getting used to that and we can be talking about degrees or radians and you can probably surmise from the diagram that once we've rotated point P about the origin we end up at P dash uh, P has coordinates X y and p dash has coordinates x dash y dash or x prime y prime you can see originally that um, point p has an angle of a phi anti-clockwise from the x-axis uh, positive direction of the x-axis and by rotating p through to p dash we have an extra theta degrees or radians now, in order to generate this um, derivation, we basically need to refer to our angles, some identities for cosine and sine. Um, these are something perhaps you've looked at or you are going to look at in the near future, and they may be on a formula sheet you get to use. Now, the two angles, some identities we're going to look at, firstly, are the um, angle sum for cosine, so the identity cos A plus B, and that equals cos A, cos B, minus sine A, sine B. And sine A plus B equals sine A, cos B, plus cos A sine B. Now that relates to the uh, given diagram or the, the diagram we've come up with because we have two angles. So where we've got cos A plus B we would be meaning cos phi plus theta. So there's our angle sum and same for sine. A angle A plus B is angle phi plus theta. So essentially that means the initial angle plus the new angle gives the final rotation. So in our diagram for point P, you can see that we have the X ordinate or the X component, which is across there, and the Y component, which can form a right angle triangle. And we can use some basic trigonometry there. So that's equal to Y and that's equal to X. And we can use some 
basic right angle trig. To generate an expression for x, um, we can say that x equals, yeah, r is the length, um, the distance from O straight out to P, which is the, basically the distance of the hypotenuse in the right angle triangle we're forming, and <clears throat> x equals r cos phi. Therefore, for x dash, which is on the image here, we could use the same idea, so it would be still r cos phi plus theta. You can see where the angle sum identity kicks in now, so to get this x coordinate of the image, um, we basically use that identity and r is distributed amongst all of the terms, okay? So r being a scalar value or a real number value, it's it's subject to distribu distributivity. Whoops, I struggled a little bit there, didn't I? So let's have a look at that. So we'd have r cos phi. So I'm just following along here, okay? Cos theta minus sine. Oh, sorry, r sine. Let me just put that in there. R sine phi, <coughs> so R sine theta. Okay, and basically we can see that um, if we replace R cos theta with X, or R cos phi, I should say, with X, R cos phi, that one, we have X cos theta. where theta is the angle of rotation. And we can also see from the diagram there that y is r sine theta using that same process with the right angle triangle, opposite over hypotenuse rearranged. So basically we're going to employ r sine theta, sine phi I should say. So r sine phi is the same as y. So again, there's r sine phi that can be replaced with y. So y sine theta. So we're going to store that result for a moment. That gives us um, an expression to find x prime. So at this stage, um, using the diagram above, we can also work out y prime. Um, and that's r sine phi plus theta. Using our sine uh, angle sum identity, we can expand that out. So we have r sine phi cos theta plus r cos phi sine theta. Alright, we already um, noted that um, x equals r cos phi and y equals r sine phi, so we can replace these here. So it'll be y cos theta, and that one will be x sine theta. Okay, and if you like, you could write the x term first, that's completely optional, but I'd like to do that. So I'm going to just rearranging the order there. So we have um, an expression there to explain um, y prime in terms of x and theta. And that's very handy when we're talking about our transformation matrices. Hence we can set up the matrices um, in the form of matrix multiplication. And if we look at setting them up like this we can get x prime and y prime um, setting up our matrices like that and we're familiar with a two by two transformation matrix with a column vector giving us a two by one image of the original point x y and if we we're looking at a specific point like we'll do in the example in a second we'll just replace x and y with particular values 
you can see if we if we do starting in the first row here cos theta times x and you get your x cos theta minus uh, y times sine theta okay and second row we got x times sine theta getting that result there and y times cos theta giving that result there so that will give us an equivalent once we crunch that will give us an equivalence that we can use for x prime y prime let's finish off with a, an example so here's an example with uh, radians but uh, you'll see examples um, and tasks with degrees so we have the point 2 negative 2 is rotated pi on 4 radians about the origin in an anti-clockwise direction so that's positive find the coordinates of the image um, after the transformation so there's our point p there okay and when we rotate that about the origin that will track around and p dash p prime will be there somewhere okay so we'll find the coordinates and um, we write out the matrix that we found so that matrix before is is a key result better highlight that so importantly when we rotate a point or a collection of points anti-clockwise about the origin at some angle theta which can be in degrees or radians we use this matrix here and the operation we use is shown there Okay, so it's about the origin anti-clockwise by an angle of theta. So to get x prime, y prime the image, um, we go cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. Multiplied by the original coordinates theta in this case equals pi on 4 just noting that explicitly it's positive so we've got cos pi on 4 negative of sine pi on 4 sine pi on 4 cos pi on 4 okay and we have the point 2 negative 2 we'll use our matrix multiplication once we've evaluated these exact values um, definitely easier here to use a rationalized denominator you'll see if you use 1 over root 2 for each of these uh, it would get to the right answer but you'd have a bit more working to do I reckon so I'm just going to put in the rationalized version Okay, multiply that through. So we have root 2 on 2 times 2 is root 2 plus another root 2 because 2 negatives make positive. Then in the second row times the column, we have another root 2 minus a root 2. So that comes out as 2 root 2. 0 is the new coordinate. Now, 2 root 2, 0, then you, if you want to even write it as an ordered pair, you could if you like. 2 root 2, 0. Um, now, it makes sense because you know that any point that's got um, the same magnitude for x and y will create 45 degree angle or pi on 4 radians there. If we're rotating it that way, that will bring it back to a y value of zero because it'll sit on the x-axis so that's a reasonable answer